Hey guys, this is what I got for this week. This is a Dell Vostro 153510. This has a mark on the screen here. It's been sent in as having a screen issue. And when I look at the side, there is an error code. So it's one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's two orange and seven white. So I think the screen is cracked, but there might be another issue. I'm gonna check it out and see what that error code means. I searched online and I found on the Dell website a Dell Vostro 153510 service manual. And when I go down to the section on, I think it's troubleshooting, and they call them diagnostic light codes. So if you look here, I've got two and seven, which is the pattern we had. And what it's saying there is LCD failure, S bias message. Uh, replace cable if possible, otherwise replace the display assembly. Now, I'm a little confused about this because when the laptop came in, as you can see, there's a mark on it. So I, I presume that it was just cracked. But a crack will generally not stop it from booting. It will boot up, but you'll just see the, you know, the backlight will light up and you'll see the crack on the screen. So what I'm wondering here is, did they get a scratch on the screen? And they've been working with that for maybe the last couple of years. And now something else has happened. But that's what I'm sort of thinking at the moment. So what I'm going to try and do is disconnect the LVDS cable from the screen and power on the laptop and see if it will work when I connect it to an external display. Let's do that now. Just in case anybody wants to carry out this test themselves if they have a similar fault, it's this cable right here is the cable that connects to the monitor. So this is the one that I'm going to disconnect. You just lift up that little piece of plastic there and carefully take out this cable. So with our laptop screen disconnected and an external monitor connected to the HDMI port as you can see here, I powered it on and the laptop powers on. So what we have here is a fault with the laptop screen alone, there's some sort of electronic fault on it, that's why we're getting the 2.7 diagnostic lights. So I'm going to order a new screen for this, but at least with the fact there that I can connect it using a HDMI cable to another external display, this tells me that there's nothing wrong with anything else on the motherboard. And I can be comfortable enough knowing that when I get a new screen and put it in, it should be okay. However, we're all about learning here, so I want to see what the fault is with the screen. Why is it bringing up that error code? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the broken screen and we're going to take a look at the electronics of it. Just one thing before I took out the screen. This is a fuse here which carries voltage onto the screen and sometimes this can blow. I checked that and I was measuring 11 volts on it. I'm not sure if that's right but there is voltage on it and I'm measuring it on both sides of the fuse and it is getting to the pin here. So just in case anybody is uh, wondering you know is the fuse on the board blown it's not it's working fine so let's get to the screen let's take it out and have a look at the circuit visual inspection first of course this is the little circuit board that's attached to the screen that I've just removed from the laptop so we want to get a look and see if anything looks dodgy on this so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scroll across here I'm gonna look at it with you and at the end we can sort of compare notes so these are first bank of capacitors this is our connector, that's a 30 pin connector, it's another large IC, it's another IC here, oh there's actually a fuse in the middle of it here, F2, that's this fuse here. And another fuse here, F1 and that's all of the visual inspection so did you did you see anything that looked dodgy well i didn't the only thing that looked a small little bit suspect was there's just a mark on this capacitor right here i'm not sure if that's of any significance at all uh, but other than that the ic's look perfect everything else all the capacitors look fine so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry out some checks just in different locations on different... Um, I'm going to check and verify the fuses first, of course. I'm also going to check the capacitors, make sure that none of those are short at the ground. So let's do that next. As I mentioned earlier on, there's two fuses on this little circuit board. So with the power off and in continuity mode, I did a, just a continuity check on this one here. This is F1. That's the fuse there. That measured fine. 
and F2 right here corresponds to this one and this fuse measured fine also so there's no problem with any of the fuses on the next I wanted to verify that there were no shorts no obvious shorts on the board so I introduced my multimeter in diode mode which looks like this on my multimeter I place my red probe to ground which I just placed it onto the chassis and then took some measurements with my black probe so the first one I wanted to check was this capacitor here which is the one that we had identified as looking just just a little bit off so I placed my probe to this side and I measured zero because this is connected to ground but on this side of the capacitor I measured what did I measure I took notes on it here I measured 0.67 volts so that's fine and then I went around just to a few of the other components so at this inductor here I measured 0.31 volts at this inductor here I measured 0.31 volts at this I measured 0.535 volts what we're looking for here is if it's a short it's going to be very very low but none of these values are low enough that they can be considered you know anywhere near a short so working my way up then to the other end of the circuit I measured the capacitors right here and 0.574 was what I measured at this point obviously ground on this side um, and on the on the main power rail that's going to the LEDs I measured here here and here and these all measured 0.654 I did other capacitors at the start of the circuit I just hopped through the different sections and I couldn't find any uh, shorts using this method now given that I've confirmed that there's no short on this little board the next thing I wanted to confirm was that there was no issue with the backlights and the LEDs this IC right here is a BOE B802 minus 1R I can't get a data sheet for this but this looks to me like the backlight driver and the reason I would say that is for two reasons we did one of these on a previous video on this channel and this has similar what would you say characteristics first of all there's a large inductor and a diode which is usually what is used to take a lower voltage like 12 volts and boost it up to about 24 volts for driving the LEDs so that's connected to this IC and the second thing is similar to the previous example we have four lines coming from this IC out to see them here one two three four coming out to this little connector which then goes out to the LEDs which are built into the panel so what I want to check is to see if this is working so that's the next thing I'm going to check so what I did was to plug the connection back into the laptop and power it on then I introduced my multimeter in volts DC in a 20 volt range I placed my black probe to ground and then I just wanted to measure the output here this is the output going to the LEDs so this should be about 24 volts but all I was measuring at this point was something like 11.4 volts so what that means is that our 11 volts is getting from the main motherboard so there's no issue with that no fuses along the way but it's not being boosted by this IC for whatever reason so what I suspect is that there's an issue with the LEDs on this so that's what I'm going to try and check next now as I said before I don't have a data sheet for this so I'm going to assume that this works in a similar way to the previous example on this channel now this is where our output which was 25 volts I think on the previous example came out and this was fed down to the LEDs through one of these pins I verified continuity between this pin here and the output here so I'm going to call this VLED and we can see these four lines at the top here that come back to this IC and I'm going to assume that they are the grounds for each of the four LED strips okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject voltage in here and then ground each one of these one by one and see if the LED strips light up if you're not sure how to do this I have already done this in my analyzing the backlight circuit for 15 inch laptop screen video in that video I introduce my DC power supply I put 25 volts on it and then I show how to inject that into each of the strips and that's what I'm going to do here so if you want to try this yourself you can refer to that video now when I injected voltage into each of these LED strips I found that one of them didn't come on so I think we do have a problem with one of the LED strips and 
you know, it's never practical to get in there and start replacing individual ones. I don't think you can even buy a new set of them, uh, you know, to replace in this laptop screen, even if you were going to do it. However, I think we might learn something by taking out those LEDs and getting a look at them. Because I've always been curious as to what they look like. I know the ones in the TVs, they're, you know, big long strips of LEDs and you'll have rows of them as well. But I don't know what they look like in these ones. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to open up this laptop screen. I'm going to take out the LEDs and I'm going to bring them onto the screen here where you can see them. I've opened up the laptop screen and I finally found the LEDs that were buried in the bottom of it down here. Now these aren't normally visible because this part of the frame is normally bent back up over it. I had to get a pliers and pull this down at the front to then reveal a piece of tape which the LEDs are stuck to. Now there's about 40 LEDs on this so uh, I know that some of them are bad. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to just rip out that tape, see it there, and I'm going to test the, each of these LEDs one by one. I've removed the tape that the LEDs are fixed to and this is what it looks like here. There is a connector that connects to the little circuit board but that was folded up behind it when I took the picture. That's the reason that that's not uh, present here. You can see that there are 40 LEDs that I've numbered here. Given that we have four return paths for each LED strip, um, I'm presuming they're in bunches of 10, which would make the most sense. And if you zoom in on it here, you can see that they are, you know, you can see 31 to 40 is in one group and there's a little notch here and 21 to 30, you know, there, it seems like there's little separate strips there. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to test each one individually and I'm going to show you how I do that next. To test the LEDs I need to use my DC power supply with my probes. So I set my DC power supply to 3.0 volts and I set a current limit of 0.01 amps or 10 milliamps so that we don't blow up any of the LEDs by putting too much current through them. Um, the LEDs now do not have an indication of which is the anode or the cathode so you may need to try it with the first one just to find out which direction they're laid out in. But I know this is the anode and this is the cathode so I place my positive probe to this side of the LED and I place my negative probe to this side. The LED should light up if it's working. If it doesn't draw current at all or it doesn't light up or if it's shorted then you know there's a fault with it and unfortunately even one bad LED can cause the whole thing to shut down. So I went 1 to 40 with these to test them all and I'll show you what that looked like. This is a video of me testing the LEDs. So as you can see when I test each one it lights up I know it's working I can move on to the next one. And as you can see here, there is one dodgy LED right there. But I went through and checked them and the rest of them all seem to be fine. So that's my video for this week, guys. I'm still going to have to buy a new screen for this laptop, obviously. But I thought it would be a good opportunity to see where the backlight is fitted in these screens and how exactly they work. Because I wasn't sure, to be honest, before I opened this one up. Um, it's obviously not something that's going to be feasible to do in order to replace the screen in the future. But I think I see it with other technicians that the more you know about the inner workings of the system, the more you have like a sixth sense as to what might be going on when there's a problem. So I think it is of benefit, even though I'm still going to have to buy a replacement screen either way. I have some more interesting videos coming up. I'm hoping to post a couple more over the Christmas, so please stay tuned. If you have any comments, put them down below, and I enjoy reading them. So please, um, anything you have to say, good or bad, put it in the comments below, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.